something marvelous. Well, once uh, I had these two big bags and two of these major change agents at National Institute of Education, uh, they were coming down. I was going to the elevator and they were walking down. And I thought, oh, oh no, you know, I've, I've got to get out of here. So I had to go in the men's room and hide. And uh, I'd never forget that, hiding in the men's room. And I thought, what if, I mean, there may be other guys coming in here, not just to the elevator. And, and anyway, nobody came in. They went down the elevator. I came out and dumped the stuff in her car. It was not a really um, exciting job. It was mainly to see if the universities, the schools, the different entities across the country that were getting money or around the world from the taxpayers, that they were getting their final, their quarterly reports in on time. That's all. It had nothing to do with philosophy. Huh? And so one day I ran across a grant to Lansing School District, Lansing, Michigan. This was University of Michigan connection with my office. And it was a values clarification program for first graders, elementary school. And it pre and post tested those little children about what goes on at home, what religion do you, oh, and I looked at this thing and I thought, what on earth are they doing? And so I turned to this bureaucrat who was working uh, with the GAO about financial things and I said, look, we're doing waste, fraud, and abuse. I know that. But I said, what do you, take a look at this. Don't you think that this is pretty wasteful, fraudulent, and abusive in another way? And so he took a look at it and he said, oh, my Lord. He said, this is horrible. And really nice guy, bureaucrat, Washington. And people sometimes get after all the bureaucrats. They're not all that bad. Some of them are just like us, and they're, they care. And uh, I said, well, look, uh, you know, I'm only meant to be here two weeks. But could you give me extra time? Because I want to go through all these grants and contracts. And he said, you can have as much time as you want. So I spent six weeks up there going through all the stuff. And uh, I can't tell you how horrible. First of all, even if you don't care about children, you don't care about education, you don't care about your country, you don't care about anything, people. Are there people out there who don't care about anything? They do care about their wallet, huh? You should care about this money that has been spent in the name of education. It's total brainwashing. Anything coming out of Washington is a total Marxist brainwash. And Marxism is the world of the future unless we stop it right now. I'm fired for leaking one of these documents to human events. It was the one that put technology into, with the computer on it, with the curriculum on it. Uh, it was a grant going out to every single state with uh, the computer curriculum uh, for the state, can you imagine, designed by Washington and all the different government education associations. And within that big paper that I found, Better Education Skills Through Technology was called Project Best. I found this one paper, one thing, this was sort of a draft, and it said, what we at the federal level can control and manipulate. That's a direct quote. Colon. And then it listed, this is for us at the local level because we don't know how to run our own laws and the state. I get fired. Uh, then uh, I write the president, I write Reagan, and I tell him what's going on in the department. And uh, I said, you would be shocked if you knew. This place has got to be shut down, etc. And it was a long letter. I explained everything that the U.S. Department of Education is a Marxist factory designed to destroy any semblance of good, good values, academics, etc., and to make sure our children march blindly into a socialist communist world government. That's the goal of the U.S. Department of Education. They didn't want they, anyone to know that Ronald Reagan had that letter. So I never got a reply. I tried to. I called Ed Meese. I, called, I went, went home, called uh, Ed Meese, who was the uh, chief counselor or whatever in the White House, and I said, I want to talk to you all. I want an answer to that letter. Uh, finally, I went down and talked with Ed Meese's aide, Ken Cribb, and I said, I he patted me on the shoulder, you know, that all that way they do that. Oh, Charlotte, uh, aren't you pleased to know the president got your letter? That's an admission right there. Hmm? I know he got it because uh, 
John Lofton, a journalist at that time in Washington, called his office, the White House, back in 1983 or something, uh, and asked. And they said, yes, it's on his desk and he's marked it up. So let's get that straight. He had it. The purpose of that letter was to make sure that that department is abolished and the American at public education is returned to its original status, at, run at the local level and with elected school board members and with no influence whatsoever from the federal or international level. That's how it should be. It was the best education system in the world. That's what I was asking for. Anyway, it didn't happen. That letter to Reagan, again, is on my website, Deliberate Dumbing Down, under a PDF. I wrote in 1985 a book called Back to Basics Reform or Skinnerian International Curriculum. And to make sure people read this little 39-pager, I decided to put an asterisk so that they didn't really have to read it. I put an asterisk which said, Necessary for United States Participation in a One World Socialist Government Plan for the Early Years of the 21st Century. When the conservatives, the neocons, let's call them that, not Goldwater people, when the neoconservatives, Heritage Foundation, all of those groups, I'm sorry folks, when they decided, when they saw that book, they boycotted it. They boycotted that book, which told Americans exactly what I just told all of you, what I'd seen, and that we had to get rid of the department. It all happened under Ronald Reagan. You call it what you want, corporate fascism, fascism, socialism, communism, Planned economy, you call it what you want. What is it? It's, it's really, uh, it's horrible. Your children have no upward mobility whatsoever. I told you earlier, I said, yeah, they're put into a slot early on. The, the government and the, and the schools, they decide what your child is capable of doing the rest of his life. He, he, he might be able to sneak out of that sometime if he's brilliant and uh, do his own thing, but it's unlikely. So it's fixed. Uh, this is the end of upward mobility for our children, end of freedom for this country. Planned economy is the end of freedom. It's a failed system, but there are people at the top who, who live very well by it. And then I find out that Ronald Reagan has signed an agreement with Gorbachev to merge the two education systems. Well, you can't tell me that conservatives didn't know that was going on because I know some who were at Geneva when this happened. And they didn't do anything about it, but we found out. And so we fought this United States-Soviet Education Exchange Agreement. The Carnegie Corporation also signed agreements. Uh, basically, most of that was in to, to do with computers and technology and critical thinking for little elementary school children. Those agreements were signed. We paid five, we raised $5,000 to put an ad in the Washington, Post, Washington Times to expose that. It was called uh, Educate is Worse Than Watergate or something. And uh, but again, we got no support because that information wasn't meant to get out. Then uh, about four years after the fact, I, I, uh, my little article was called Soviets in the Classroom, America's Latest Education Fad that nobody would touch. The conservatives, the, all the different conservative groups, media and all, would not publish it. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden I got a phone call from a wonderful man by the name of Robert Morris. He was a judge from New Jersey. He calls and, and he said, uh, I'm now the president of America's Future. And I had tried to get this article published by America's Future, Soviets in the Classroom. And uh, I couldn't get it published. It was interesting because America's Future used to do a lot of articles on bad textbooks and everything in the United States. And I thought surely they would be interested in the United States Soviet textbook uh, agreement too, and exchanges. And I was sure they, but no, they would not publish it. So this Marbus, Bob Morris became president. He found my article in a drawer in the desk that was left there, the manuscript. And he read it and he thought, oh, what is this? Can you imagine? He's a leading conservative himself, very important person. He had not heard about it. He had not heard what Reagan had done. It's happened ever since 1958 when the first agreement was signed by Eisenhower with the Soviet Union at the peak of the Cold War. And then the various agreements have been signed all the way through until recently, one with terrible one with China. So we have merged and let me point out just today I was informed that uh, there are forces at work in the state of Maine that are surrounding our wonderful people that we elected 
last November. Traditional Mainers, good, hardworking Mainers who were very upset about what's going on, they worked hard to get our governor in, a wonderful man, Paul LePage. And I want to warn all of you that out in your states, if you elected some really good people, they've been surrounded. And you've got to be very careful. You've got to let them know not to go along with any of the agendas that call for regional government or consolidation. Because regionalism, you know, the merging of services, the police forces in one town, police force merges with another one, the schools consolidate, all the little schools merge into a big one. They tell you that's to save money and all. They're lying to you because it doesn't. We know that. It doesn't save money. But what it really is, regionalism is communism. And I have an article. It's in Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. You can look up the name Zeitlin. You will see this communist writer for the Communist Daily World in the mid-70s talking about the need for the United States to implement regionalism and consolidation. It's communism. So any effort that you see out there where they use the word, they don't use the word regionalism that much anymore. They're getting smart. They use the word consolidation. They convince the people, especially in economic down, downturn times like right now, this tragic time we're going through, that this will save money. They won't have as high taxes. Consolidate, consolidate. Don't do it. We are the major country that's going down to communism and the rest of the world will follow. They'll call it the global system, the international socialist global system. It is nothing but a totalitarian system. In 2002, President Gorbachev, in speaking in London, he called the European Union the new European Soviet. We know what we're looking at. The North American Union and all other regional entities throughout the world, whether it's the Pacific Circle Consortium or whether it's the Middle East. You think we went into the Middle East for any reason other than to destroy Iraq and uh, to make it part of a region in, uh, hooked into the banks? Hmm? What they're doing is they're destroying the Middle East so they can restructure it as a region in this new world order. So these are all the regions. Their whole structure is based on the model, which is the European Union. So I ask Americans, what will you call? What would Gorbachev call the North American Union? He would call it the North American Soviet. How do we like that? Wake up. If there's anything that is important for you to remember from these videos today is that we are at the end of the line. We are doing exactly what Gorbachev wants. Consolidation. Now, this is an interesting cartoon. This is regional government. This is the consolidation of schools, basically. And you see the little guy in the one-room schoolhouse. He's chewing a piece of grass or something. And he looks very happy. He belongs to Little Frog Lick Creek High School. He's chewing the grass with a smile. If you follow him through, you're going to see him looking more and more miserable as they merge his one-room schoolhouse to a six-room schoolhouse to eight more schools and then into a central school which is a region uh, and then you're going to see him at the end he's holding his left arm out up like this clenched fist little hair very unhappy call and his t-shirt says our lady of the benevolent dictatorship one world global training corps and then the last one he has on earphones you know like you guys have all the time. Finally, he's smiling. He's connected to something with a wire. And it says, Interplanetary Carbon Unit Reprogramming Pod. Well, I saw that in a very liberal left education journal called Phi Delta Kappa. Many people will recognize that. 1983. The title of it is Consolidation. Going from the small school to the central regionalized school, and uh, which is what regional government is all about. And you know, you can get rid of the, all the parochial views that the children have in the little school where the parents can go 
you know, the school board meetings just across the street, the school, and all the parents know each other, the teacher, you know, it's a lovely atmosphere.